Hi, thank you for registering for Cal Poly San Luis Obispo's application workshop for Cal State Apply. This video is specifically tailored towards our transfer applicants. In this video, we will be identifying all the areas where you may have some pain points or questions or issues so that you can identify those early, make a list of questions, and come to the workshop prepared to get all of your questions answered. Let's get started. Before we dive into the application, I very quickly want to go through and make sure you all know where your requirements live. So from the admissions homepage, we go up to transfer student, selection criteria, this first hyperlink, the drop down menu, select your program, hit submit. So from here, you'll scroll to the bottom, find the term to which you're applying, expand it out by hitting the plus sign, and this is where your required coursework lives. They don't live exclusively on assist. If you're a California Community College student, you can use this page in tandem with assist.org to figure out what these courses equal at your school. But assist doesn't have the requirements, only articulation. So that's an important distinction to make. All right, now let's get started. To begin your application, navigate to the Cal State Apply website and either create an account or sign in if you already have one previously. When creating your account, you'll be asked to enter in your first and last name. Please make sure this is your full legal name and that you don't include any nicknames in this portion. Next, you'll enter in your contact information. We want to draw your attention to the email address. Please select an email address that is neither associated with your current school or used on a personal domain like john at smithfamily.com. We want to go for the ones that are more broadly used, like Gmail, Yahoo, etc. This will ensure that your emails continue to reach you throughout the summer and that we don't encounter any firewalls that prevent the emails from getting to you in the first place. After you've selected a username and a password that you're going to keep in a safe place for future reference, answer the remaining questions and hit Save Changes. After you complete your profile, you'll be taken to the Extended Profile. Here, Anyone watching this video will be selecting first bachelor's degree. Cal Poly does not issue second bachelor's degrees, and this option would only be used for someone pursuing a master's degree. So you'll click this first one, and then either transferring with an associate's degree for transfer, or just from a community college or four-year institution. If you click this one, it will ask you to add the details of your ADT program. It's perfectly fine if the current ADT you have does not match the major that you are applying to at Cal Poly. If you have a second ADT, it'll ask for the details of that one as well. If you don't have an associate's degree for transfer, you simply click that last option and confirm that you will have 60 semester units or 90 quarter units of CSU transferable coursework complete by the end of spring to be eligible for fall our campus does not admit lower division transfers, and you cannot use summer coursework to meet the requirements. We do not want to see any of that in this application. From there, you'll answer the returning student question. This only applies to students who have been previously admitted to the exact CSU they are applying to in the same exact program. Answer the military questions, international applicant questions, save changes. Once you have created your profile, it will prompt you to select a program. I find that the easiest way to navigate this page is by using the filters button. You can select by campus and find Cal Poly San Luis Obispo and any other campuses you want to apply to. You'll notice that for our campus, it simply says Cal Poly undergraduate. It doesn't say San Luis Obispo. So if you type that into your search bar up here, our campus will not come up. From here, you can also select an alternate program for our campus. It is not required, but you do need to answer the question if you don't want to select an alternate major, simply click the button here, I am not inter interested in an alternate program, and save this choice. Please note that consideration of an alternate major is not guaranteed, but some students do get admitted every year on their alternate major. If you're going to select one, make sure you have the transfer selection criteria for that program as well. Once you're done selecting all the programs you wish to apply to, you'll have an option to continue to my application. When you click that button, you'll be brought to this screen with the four quadrants. The first quadrant we'll talk about is the personal information area. This is going to be where you report your biographical and demographics information. Most of it is self-explanatory, but I wanna talk specifically about the financial information area for just a second. I'd like to draw your attention to this portion up at the top. 
please know that income data reported on this page is used to calculate fee waiver eligibility and is gathered by the CSU for demographic trend tracking. It does not affect your financial aid, nor is it considered in the admissions process. If you have any questions about how to report your information on this page, please reach out to our office. The next quadrant we'll work on is the academic history quadrant. You'll begin by entering in your high school's attended. Even though you are applying as a transfer student, you do need to enter in what high school you graduated from. I will quickly fill this out as it's pretty self-explanatory. So we enter in our dates attended from the drop-down menu. We select the term type that our school uses. And we add in our graduation and diploma information. Save and continue. This next question here is if you did a bulk of your work outside of the United States. It's not something that applies to one year of study abroad coursework or something like that, um, but this is for our students who maybe have mixed international and domestic education. Um, you would answer this question accordingly. Uh, this helps let us know how to process you on our end. If you have any questions about this section, feel free to bring it up in the workshop. Otherwise, let's save and continue. Now we'll move on to the college's attended portion. Here, you are going to enter in every single college you've attended or that you plan to for the duration of this year. You can begin by typing in the name of your school and it should auto-populate. Here, it's asking if you're obtaining a degree. This is going to be like an associate's degree, not a, a bachelor's degree. Um, you can provide the details for that if it applies. If not, you can simply say no and move on. Indicate the term type. Indicate what kind of tuition you're you're paying currently if your school differentiates between in-state and out-of-state tuition. And then next you'll indicate when you first began attending. Fill in all of these dates. If you're still attending, you will put that. We prefer actually you putting the, the true date instead of checking this box, but you can do either one. And then hit save. And you'll go through this process for as many colleges as you've attended. Okay, now I've gone through and added both of my colleges. And next, we will proceed to enter in our college coursework. Please begin by thoroughly reading through the instructions at the top of the page. Once you're ready, scroll down and select one of your colleges to begin. You begin by adding each semester, and then you fill in the corresponding coursework from there. I'll do this quickly so you can kind of see an example of how this works. You'll begin by entering in the details of that term. You'll see that summer one and two are an option because some schools do have multiple summer sessions. If you're attending a California community college, you'll notice that your course title will auto-populate as you begin to enter it in. If not, you'll have to enter that in manually, enter in the credits that you've earned, the grade, and then of course, select the transferable box. If you don't select that transferable box, this course will not get counted towards your overall total, and we're only wanting to look at those transferable courses. So you'll go through each one and save, add your next term, so on and so forth, and the process repeats. Okay, now we're gonna talk about repeated coursework. There's basically two ways that this can go. Either you've already repeated the course, or you're re repeating the course right now when it's in progress. So let's explain the two ways that this should be entered. First, we're gonna look at my example with Physics 205A. You can see I first took the course in spring 2023. I failed that course, but I retook it in summer 2023 and received an A. Because I have already, at the time of filling out this application, successfully repeated the same exact course at the same exact school, I am able to omit that lower grade and replace it with RP, meaning repeated. Next, look at the example of my Psych 201 course. I received a D in spring of 2023, but I have not yet repeated it. I have it in progress right now for fall 2024. Because I have not yet successfully replaced that lower grade, it needs to stay in here. If I pass it in fall, great. I'm gonna be able to go back in there in January, replace that D with an RP, have my higher grade, and be able to move forward. If I fail it again in fall and I need to retake it in spring, that D is going to stay there. If you have any repeated coursework, let's make sure to review how you entered that into the application during the workshop. The next thing I want to talk about is using standardized test scores 
for some of your coursework requirements. So if you took AP courses in high school, you took that AP test and you scored a three, four, or five, you can enter in that test credit and put them in the standardized test section. This is gonna be my AP stat. I've already taken this exam. If you don't remember the exact day, just a month is fine. A uh, month and year will, will be helpful for us. You enter in the score that you received and you hit save this test. And of course, remember that we're gonna need those final official test scores if you do get admitted. So if you get an offer of admission um, in you know, March or, or April, Request those scores to be sent to us immediately from College Board, especially if it's been a few years since you've taken the test. College Board will need to unarchive those scores and it can take extra long, so especially if you're using them to meet the Golden Four, some of your basic requirements for your major. Once you have finished entering in your coursework in standardized tests, you'll be directed to the last tile, the General Education or Golden Four section. Here you'll see a chart where some of your courses are going to auto-populate based on the GE area that they fulfill. You need one for every section. If your course does not auto-populate, you can select it from the drop-down menu, find the course you want to use, and select it from there. If you are opting out of one of the sections, for example, critical thinking, if your program does not require it, you can select this opt-out button, if you're using a standardized test score to meet one of these requirements, you should be able to find them in the drop-down menu as well and select that choice, then save and continue. Now that our first two quadrants are complete, we will continue on to the supporting information quadrant. Here you'll see a tile for entering in the details of your ADT and your involvement with EOP. Here it brought in the information I already reported from my extended profile. It's also asking me to include my campus student ID number from my current campus and the anticipated or completed degree date of my ADT. So I just fill that in real quick. I'll just make these numbers up. Once I fill out the two required sections, save and continue, go on to the next. And here it's going to ask if you've been involved in the EOP program at your school. If you're not sure what this is, you can click these links above to read details on that program answer the corresponding questions, and continue. The last quadrant of the application is the Program Materials quadrant. When you click here, you'll see a blue bar for every campus and program that you applied to. The first page will be a synopsis of the program you applied to for that campus, and the next will be the custom questions that each campus can ask you. I will expand out and scroll down. First, you'll see a series of acknowledgments. You'll click each box to agree. Then, based on your applicant level, the next questions will populate. I'll indicate transfer, and then it's going to ask me about my work hours and extracurricular experience. First, it asks the average number of hours worked per week over the previous 36 months. This is paid or unpaid work. You will pick the bracket of time. Uh, that best encapsulates your average hours. Then we're going to ask if 25% or more of that time was related to the major of choice, so the major you're applying to. Next, we're going to ask about your extracurricular activities. So same basic format, average number of hours per week, over 36 months, you pick the bracket of time. And then we're going to ask if you held a leadership role in any of these activities simple yes or no. So if you were ever once, you know, team captain, club vice president, etc., you'll say yes. Then we're going to make sure that you understand your transfer selection criteria and the fact that the required courses for your program live exclusively on our website and that you understand that. A question about housing, and then you'll be able to save and continue. Once you see that all four quadrants are fully green and all complete, you are ready to submit your application. On this page, you will see all of the applications that you have filled out. For In reality, you'll be able to hit the submit button and move through the payment process. If you qualify for a fee waiver, it will automatically be granted to you in the application itself. If not, you'll be prompted to pay the $70 application fee per campus. Um, but hopefully if you're attending the workshop, you haven't submitted yet so that we're still able to make changes to any potential issues that we encounter, but this is how the submission process will work. 
After you've submitted, you can always come back and access a PDF download of your application by clicking on this blue symbol here, and that will allow you to check your work and see what data is going to be sent to each school. After you've submitted, I'd recommend going to the Check Status tab here to make sure that your application status does say submitted. If any of them say in progress, you have not completed the submission process. Thank you for watching this video. We look forward to meeting you at the workshop. See you soon.